it seems a little bit prodding. For instance, it, I'm actually concerned with the, the part where it says that she was shaking. Yeah. That's a very, maybe, important part of the investigation. And the tape that we see, Patrick seems to suggest the tape, the shaking. I went over a transcript today. Or am I wrong on that? I, I didn't understand that quite well. What does, let me back that up. What does Yaron say about Natalie the night that uh, she died? Well, what he is saying is that he was on the beach with her, and then she shud suddenly did like this. And then he panicked and he said, well, she died at that moment. She wasn't ticking anymore. And uh, then he phoned his friend and uh, he wanted to get rid of the body. And uh, they uh, brought her into a boat and then she was uh, 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 disposed in, into the ocean. Now, um, I, there's a lot of rumors coming out of Aruba, as you might imagine. One thing I'm hearing tonight, that we had Dory Rodriguez on last night, who was the person who was actually identified on your tapes. But now there's a suggestion that it might be another Dory. Do you know if there's another Dory? Yeah, Dory Rodriguez is not the guy mentioned by Yoram. It's another guy. He's in the news, I know that. But he's not the guy who is mentioned by Yoram. All right. Who, where is this other guy mentioned by Yoram who helped, uh, according to Yoram, dispose of the body? Well, we don't know. The, the police investigators are looking for him, but uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, Dowry is really Joran's helper, because the first day when he was talking about his helper, Joran said, I will never ever mention his name. I will take that into my grave. And then the next day, when our man Patrick was pushing a little bit on that and telling him, well, who was it? You can trust me. Then he mentioned the name Dowry, but I think He's protecting somebody else. All right. And do you know who that somebody else is? I mean, do you have any sort of, besides just sort of a, a gut reaction, do you have anything independent to suggest who it might really be? Well, that's hard to say. Then, I, then I'm starting uh, speculating. And, well, I might not do that. What efforts are being made, if you know, by the police to locate him? Well, the Dutch uh, police is, uh, is very busy with the investigation. Uh, that's what I understood and they are looking for this guy, whoever it may be. Now, do you, have, is, do you have confidence in the Dutch police and the Aruba police in terms of this investigation? Yeah, I met uh, uh, several uh, guys from the team. I spoke to Hans Moss, the, the, the head prosecutor, and uh, I ha I'm confident, quite confident, that, that they will uh, solve this case finally. Is there anything on that tape that you did not show for whatever reason that you think that would be particularly important to the investigation? No, no, no. Uh, you have seen all relevant uh, scenes and uh, I think uh, what, what we didn't broadcast is more of the same, you could say. And boy talk, as you was described, or guy and, talk or something. And boy talk, yes. All right. Now, uh, when you showed that tape to Hans Moss, the chief prosecutor, uh, what did he say to you? Oh, he was, of course, very happy. And there was also uh, the police commissioner, Dolph Richardson. And when he was looking at the tape, he said to me, can you please pinch me in the arm? Because this is what we are waiting for. What about an arrest? Did they mention anything about, you, you know, that there was an effort to try to arrest Jaron Van der Sloot. The judge turned them down. It's now on appeal. Do you have any more information on that? Now, what I know now is that Jaron Van der Sloot made a statement to the police investigators today. I don't know what, what he said, but there was a statement. And, well, that's a, a great development because until now, Jaron Van der Sloot Ref refused to talk to the police and didn't say a word. So now he's talking, and let's hope that he is answering all the questions. What, prov what prompted him to toss that wine in your face on that TV show? Did you say something to him, or what was that all about? Oh, he was frustrated about me because I was, I was asking questions all the time, and I was saying, I was telling the audience that, li that Joran lied several times, that he couldn't answer simple questions, and that he was always keeping silent to the police. And, well, that frustrated him. Did you already have in the can the tape and know it was on the tape, or, was that, or, or did you at that point? Pardon? Did you, already, did you already have your tape completed at that time, of the undercover tape? No, 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 it wasn't completed. The, the, the uh, undercover operation was running at that moment. All right, both his parents, were they both present for that? Yeah, they were present, yeah. Did, uh, did Yaron's parents say anything to you at that point or even after the show? 
after the show they apologized for what their son did and I think uh, his mother he is, is a good mother she loves her son and but she doesn't know what he is uh, what he is doing I think and well his father I have some special thoughts about him all right then I hope you'll come back Peter as you develop more information on those special thoughts if indeed you get some more information on them uh, Peter you're always welcome back here so thank you Peter okay you're welcome Greta coming up imagine how Natalie's father feels hearing Ron Vandersloot talking about his daughter not sure she was dead yet dumping her body overboard anyway you'll hear from Dave Holloway Natalie's father next and later Natalie's mother Beth Holloway just saw that tape you'll hear directly from her she says some of the information on this new tape is not new to her very disturbing did police know this and hide it Beth Holloway will tell you exactly what police said in the hours after Natalie disappeared